Hey everyone, welcome to the advanced Pi game tutorial. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a really long tutorial series, and the videos are probably going to be a little bit longer than the normal, I guess, 10 to 20 minute videos that the other series I did was. Um, and it's not, it is a tutorial. I will be talking a lot about what I'm doing. Um, but a lot of this, uh, uh, we're going to have a lot of troubleshooting in here, and a lot of this stuff is, um, uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty involved. So there's there's probably gonna be portions where I'm not talking a lot because um, I'll be sitting here trying to think and figure out things. But uh, hopefully you'll watch it and learn something for it. But I made a uh, I made a document here that just kind of gives a brief overview of some of the things we're gonna be doing. Um, so the look and feel I'm going for, I want this to look like a Super Nintendo uh, type game. Um, and the focus isn't the actual game we're making. It's mainly the all the back-end stuff to make making a game really upscalable. Um, in the end, we will actually put a game into this thing, and I want to do like a side-scroller uh, type game, uh, but we'll worry about that when we get to it. But I want it to be a 16-bit, kind of similar to Super Nintendo, but I want it to be uh, 16 by 9. Uh, I know like a lot of Python or Pi game tutorials, you'll see them do uh, a 640 by 480 window. But I actually want to do like an HD window, but it'll still be low native resolution, so it'll have that 16-bit style to it. Um, you want to make sure whatever resolution you pick is um, can easily divide into like 1920 by 1080, because most of our monitors are all 16 by 9. So you need to pick a resolution that easily goes into 1920 by 1080, because our game will have a system where you can easily... Uh, as you're playing the game, you can go into the options menu and scale the game up to full screen or make it like one third of the screen or half the screen. Um, but say you're playing the game in windowed mode and then you scale the game up to full screen on the person's monitor and they have a 1440p monitor. And if it's not, if your native resolution isn't 16 by 9, then the scaling is going to look all jacked up. So the resolution I picked, I just divided 1920 and 1080 by 4 and got 480 by 270. So that's the native resolution we're going to go for. And then what we'll do in our code, we'll actually run some code that can get the user's monitor that they're using and find out what resolution their monitor is, and it'll scale it up appropriately. Um, the, for the graphics system, we're going to have like a layering system, and uh, we're going to make a graphics object. It'll have eight layers on it. There'll be two background layers um, for like parallax scrolling. Um, we'll have platforms, tiles, uh, then there'll be a layer for like enemy type objects, another one for the player, and you, you can put other objects on these things, but this is kind of like the uh, basic description of what would go on these layers. Uh, layer 5 will be like projectiles, items, various things. Uh, layer 6 would be foreground objects, and layer 7 will be for the HUD. Um, we're also going to, if you remember in the last Pi game tutorial, we kind of just attached the audio um, sounds to the ship that we made and to the enemies that we made. Um, we could do that here, but I actually want to make an audio engine type object that handles all the audio. I don't exactly know how I'm going to do that yet, um, but we'll figure it out as we get there. Uh, one rule I have is no repeats. So if ever we repeat any code within our program, um, we need to make a function for it or a class. Because uh, in, in the long run, it's going to help you out tremendously if you're not repeating the same types of functions over and over again. Um, we'll be using inheritance a lot. So I put an example here. So we have the sprite class in Pygame that we use all the time anytime we make a sprite but we're going to make our own class called static entity and when i say entity uh, i mean like a thing you can see on the screen most of the time there are some things we're going to make that's called an entity that you won't actually see but you can just think of that as a physical thing in the game um so the static entity will inherit from Sprite and we'll add some attributes to that. Uh, the dynamic entity has everything the static entity has, but it has some more stuff. And then like a character would have everything a dynamic entity has, but more stuff. And then the player has everything a character has, but then more stuff added to it. And these aren't all the things that we'll use inheritance. Some of these little sections will break off into others. Like uh, right after static entity, um, it could also, we'll make a tile object that inherits from static entity. So there's like a branch right here that branches off into a tile and other things. 
and each one of these will have kind of branching paths. Um, uh, the next thing, resolution, graphics, full screen, hardware acceleration. Uh, that just means we're going to implement some system where uh, in while the user is playing the game, they can um, on the fly change the resolution of the game or make it full screen. And when it goes to full screen, I'll show you how to turn hardware acceleration on to where Pygame will use the graphics card um, instead of the processor. And we'll also, um, I can show you how to make it, uh, we can give an option to turn VSync on and off uh, within Pygame. Uh, <clears throat> the game controller, I can't remember, we didn't, yeah, we didn't use a controller in the Galaga tutorial, uh, but this is like the game controller, and it's not a controller like a, uh, an Xbox controller here. It's a... Uh, it, it's literally the con it controls our program. It's kind of like the heart or the brain of our program. So you can think of when we boot up our program, there's some setup that has to happen. And then we have, it creates a controller object and the controller object has all the different states the game can be in. So it can have, it has a splash screen state for like when you know when the company logo comes up and fades out. It has the main menu state for like it says start game, load game, options. Uh, so let's say you hit start game. It'll have this. The next state will be like a. Um, I don't know. You can have like a cutscene object, and then there's a state for a level. There's a state for an ending. Every type of state the game can be in, the controller has all those objects, and it has all the logic for. It can check to see, hey, did an event occur in the current state to where we need to flip it to another state. So if the character, if you beat, if you beat the level and you end up beating the game. It has a logic for, oh, we need to flip it to the ending state. So then it starts, uh, it puts that in the main loop and starts showing the ending. Um, so a lot, it's it's actually not hard. It, it The first time I learned how to make one of these, and I'm not sure how I, I learned it. I think I found some guy online that, uh, I think he made Mario or something. He like remade Mario in Pi Game. And I examined his code, and I was like, "Oh man, this like just reading this was so much better than like watching YouTube tutorials." Because everyone on YouTube just kind of does like a basic one, one page uh, or one file pie game game. And it's like, "Yeah, this is cool. You can make a simple game, but how do I make something that's bigger and has more parts to it?" Well, I just examined his code, and he I saw he had something. I think he called it a controller, which is where I got the name from. Uh, I'm not sure if that's like a standard name for it, but. Uh, yeah, and I just saw that's what he was doing. He had a controller, and it contained all the states and the logic for how it flipped the states depending on what events occurred. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, entity state system. So when when I say entity, again, you can think of something like a thing you see on the screen, like the player. The player is an entity. So let's say we're making Mega Man. You have Mega Man on the screen. Um <clears throat> One, one way you could approach that, uh, you could write all the logic for uh, how Mega Man changes states. Like, his, say you press the jump button, there's a, there's a whole function list for how to handle jumping, how to handle attacking, how to handle running, his idle animation. He'll, he'll still have all that logic in his own class, but um, a lot of the code to handle that is really redundant, and you'll be throwing it all in all the other entities, like all the enemy objects. Well, we can take all that redundant code and throw it into an object we call um, an entity state object. And this one's a bit confusing, but you'll understand it more um, when we get there. Uh, I'll try, try and explain it. But there's just a lot of extra code you'll be repeating over and over on all these objects that we can take out and encapsulate in its own object called the entity state system. Um, animation is kind of the same. Uh, so again, we could take Mega Man. If you have a Mega Man type object um, or and all your enemy objects, they're gonna have a lot of the same animation code. Uh, and we can take all that out and make an animation object. And it's like an object that knows how to handle everything to do with animation. All we gotta do is like pass in uh, Mega Man's images to the animation system. And Mega Man has his own animation object that knows how to handle how he animates. Again, that one's kind of confusing to talk about, but when we get to it, I'll try and go over it as best as possible. Um, uh, let me just read this real quick. Yeah, so this kind of goes over what I just said. Uh, you saw me use the constants file. Um, 
This is something I think I got from that guy's Mario uh, tutorial as well. I, I noticed he used it's kind of like the I and I file. If you've ever played a game on Steam and you look up like how to do something online, and they're like you got to go in the I and I file and change some values around. It's very the constants file I use is very similar to that. It's just a file with a ton of constants in it, and it, they're just like variables that you use all throughout multiple files in your program and they all pretty much they're constant so they stay the same um but th this file by the end of it will be very big it'll have probably uh, over a hundred things in it it'll have a lot uh ultra colors ultra colors is actually a module i made it's not really a module it's just a, a well it is a module it's just a file i made that has um if you've ever worked with pi game and you've been tired of like uh whenever you make a color and you have to type in, oh, I want, I want this shade of blue, so I gotta put 230, comma, 10, comma, five. Well, that's, that would be red. I want this shade of red, so you would type that. I just made a file that has like a thousand colors in it and they're all named, so you can just type in like ultra, I, I always import it as color, so you can just type in color dot dark red five or something like that. Um, I'll put a link to that file in the description if you want it because I use it all the time. Um, I just went on, on some website and looked up all this color information and threw all these colors in a file. So I don't have to put RGB values, they're just named. Um, and then the uh, event handler object, uh, you saw us use that in the Galaga um, tutorial as well. Uh, it's the object that's going to handle all of our user inputs. Uh, and we'll also add support for direct input or X input devices. So Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox controllers will all work. Um, we'll also be using uh, the command design pattern. So we can uh, every input on the controller will be its own object. And the reason you do this, what you've probably wondered if you've seen most simple tutorials, it'll it'll have something where it'll say if event type. E equals key down or pi game dot key down and the key is the space key then run the players dot shoot function well that works for a simple game but what if you wanted to give uh an option menu in the game and allow the the player to customize their controllers well you couldn't do it with that but doing this command pattern um, where you actually store the input into its own class and you can swap all those variables that contain the those commands like the a button variable has the a button object on it but you can make something in you can make something in the game where, where they can customize the controllers and then the a, you can make it say well the a button variable or object now equals the c button command so you've swap it's going to be it's confusing i know but we'll uh i'll get to it when we make it and explain it a little bit better so um yeah, that's just some of the stuff we're going to do. There's a ton more, and this is going to be a really long series. Uh, I hope I finish it. Um, I uh, I have to work during the week, so it's hard for me to find time to do these videos. But I'm going to try and do at least an hour a week uh, on these, like work an hour every weekend on it. Um, I'll probably work a little bit more and then kind of edit the video to where it fits in an hour. I don't know how I'll do it. But, yeah, so that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video, and we'll go ahead and get started on this. Bye.